Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we'll review how to perform the packing process using the warehouse management mobile application. This process is managed by a feature called Pack Containers using the Warehouse Management mobile app. This feature is released in application version 10.0.31 and it's managed by the Feature Management Workspace. Using this feature, the warehouse workers could perform the packing activities using the Warehouse Management mobile application with the freedom to move around while performing the packing process. This is necessary for the organizations that ship large items or when it comes to perform the packing process outside the normal packing stations. This feature introduces for menu items to support the packing process. The first menu item called Pack Inventory into Containers that is used for the main process to pack the items into the containers. The second menu item called Container Creation that is used to create the containers where the shipment items going to be packed into. The third menu item called Container Closing that is used to close the shipment containers and the last menu item is used to print the container labels. The backing process using the Warehouse Management mobile application is not far away from the backing process in Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. So once the picking process is completed, the packing process starts where the warehouse worker will log into the mobile device, then identify a packing location. After that, the packer should scan a shipment ID to identify the items that will be bagged, then create a new container that will be used to pack the items into. When the container is fully bagged, the warehouse worker will register the container as closed. Now let's review a quick demo on how to pack containers using the warehouse management mobile application. Assuming that the picking process is completed, let's move to the packing process. So I'll navigate to the warehouse management mobile application and here we have a menu for the packing process that contains the packing menu items. The packing process could be performed in one shot by a single warehouse worker or it could be performed in multiple steps by several warehouse workers. So a warehouse worker could prepare and create the containers where another warehouse worker will pack the items into the container and closing the container or probably someone else will close the container. In this demo, we'll walk through the packing process in one shot. I'll start from the pack inventory into containers menu item and first I have to confirm my packing location. So this is the default packing location. I'll confirm then I have to identify the shipment to identify the items that will be packed. Here you can scan the shipment ID or utilizing the data inquires menu item, you can look up for the available shipments. So I'll use here the data inquiry menu item to look up the shipments and here uh, this is a confirmation step to confirm the warehouse as per the filter that I have for the data inquiry menu item. I'm looking for the shipments with the status open, waived or in process that will be uh, shipped today. So I'll confirm the criteria and here we have only one shipment. I'll select the shipment. Then here we have to specify the items that will be packed. Here we can see that we have a remaining shipment lines of only one line. Then here we have the remaining shipment volume, the customer delivery address, the packing location and the shipment ID. Here I can scan the item ID or also I can look up for the items in this shipment. So I'll click here, look up item and here we can see that we have only one item, LCD screen cleaning kit. I'll use this item, then I'll confirm the item. And after that, I have to scan the container that I'm using to pack the items into. Uh, here I can scan the container ID if the container is already created or we can use the, uh, the app detour functionality to call the container creation menu item. So I'll click here container creation menu item and first I have to specify the container type. Here we can scan the container type or also we can look up for the available container types. Uh, 
So here, uh, what I have in the data inquiry menu item for the container type, I'm looking for the container types that have attribute equal back. I'll click OK, and here we can select from the available container types. So I'll select the box small container type. Then here we have an automatically created container ID. This could be created also manually as per the packing profile that you have. I'll confirm the container ID. Then the item has been bagged into the container and right now I can close the container. So I'll use the menu item of container closing. Then here we have to specify the container ID to be closed. I'm using here the lookup for the available containers. This is the container that I have. I'll select the container. Here uh, we should confirm the weight or we can overwrite the shipment weight. I'll keep it, then I'll click OK. And right now the container is closed. Now let's review the configurations and the features that I have used in this demo. So in addition to the main feature, back containers using the warehouse management mobile app, I utilized other features to support the packing process. So I enabled the warehouse management app details, multi-level details for the warehouse management mobile app, to submit details steps for the warehouse management mobile and the warehouse management app data inquiry flow. Then we have the main menu items for the packing process. Pack inventory into container menu item, container creation menu item, and container closing menu item. Then I have defined several data inquiry menu items to support the packing process. So the first data inquiry menu item to look up the containers and here the table name is WHS container warehouse location view. Here in the edit query, I'm looking for the containers that have not been closed yet. Then here in the field list, you can specify the fields or the values that will be displayed to the users in the warehouse management mobile application. So here, for example, I'm displaying the container ID, container status, weight, and so on. Then we have a lookup for the container type, and the table name is WHS container type. In the edit query, I'm looking for the container types that have attribute to equal pack. Then here in the field list, I'm displaying these values. Then we have a lookup for the items, and the table name is WHS load line. Here in the edit query, I'll keep it blank. Then I'm displaying here these values. Then I'm look up for the location or the packing location. So the table name is WMS location. Here in the edit query, I'm looking for the location profile ID equal back to retrieve all the available packing locations. Then here in the field list, I'm displaying these values. Last but not least, I'm looking for the shipments. So here the table name is WHS shipment table. Then here in the edit query, I'm looking for the shipment with the status open, waived, or in process. Then here in the field list, I'm displaying these values. After that, I have defined two mobile device menus for the pack that contains the backing menu items and data inquiry that contains the lookup or the data inquiry menu items. Now let's navigate to the mobile device steps and here I'm utilizing the data functionality to navigate from the back into containers menu item, either to create a new container or to close an existing container. I'm also using the data inquiry menu items to look up the required information. Now let's review what we have here in the mobile device steps, the same sequence as the demo flow. The first step that we have is packing location ID that is used to identify the packing location. I'm using this step with the pack into containers menu item and here I added a data inquiry to look up the location. If we click here, select fields to send, I'm not sending anything from the back into containers, but I'll bring back the packing location value 
from the lookup location menu item and I'll paste it into the back into containers menu item. Here you will see that we have a new option that's called auto submit. If you mark this option, then the backend location value will automatically confirm it uh, instead of letting the user manually confirm it, the location value. The second step is the shipment ID that is used to identify the shipment. Here I'm using the system ID with the back into container menu item, and here I added uh, a lookup for the shipment. Here I'm not pasting also anything from back into containers, but I'll bring back the shipment value from the lookup shipment, then I'll paste it into the back into containers menu item. Once we identified the shipment, then we need to identify the items of the shipment. So here in the step ID, we have the item ID that I'm using also with the back into containers. And here uh, I added the lookup item. If we look here, so uh, here I'm sending the shipment from the back into containers. Then I'll paste it into the lookup item. Then I'll bring back the item number from the lookup item. Then I'll paste it into the back into containers menu item. Right now we have to create a new container, but before creating the container, we'll have to specify the container type. So first, in the step ID of container type to create container, here I'm using this step with the container creation menu item. Here I added the lookup for the container type. I'll not send anything from the container creation, but I'll bring back the value of container type code from the lookup container type, then I'll paste it into the container creation. Then after that, we can review the container ID to pack step in order to create a new container. I'm using this step with the pack into containers, and here I just added the data for the container creation. I'll send the location and shipment information from the pack into containers menu item, then I'll paste it into the container creation. After the container is created, then we'll bring back the container ID value from the container creation menu item, then we'll paste it into the pack into containers menu item. Now we can close the container, but before closing the container, we need to identify the container ID. So here in the container ID step, I'll link this step to the container closing menu item. Then here we have the lookup for container data inquiry. Then here in the select fields to send, I'll send the location and shipment information from the container closing menu item and paste it into the lookup container menu item. Then when we identify the container ID, we'll bring back the container ID from lookup for container and paste it into the uh, container closing menu item. Then after that, here in the item ID step, we can close the container. So here in the item ID step with back into containers menu item, I added the data for container closing. Here, I'll send the location and shipment information from the back into containers menu item. Then I'll paste it into the container closing. After that, we can identify the container ID and close the container. So this was a quick walkthrough about the configurations and the process of backing containers using the warehouse management mobile application. Thank you for your time and watching this video. Take care and good luck.